delivery day today. We've had a parcel from Express Panels. And what we have in here is a very nicely made half floor. So I'll pull that out and show you guys what it looks like. Ah, look at that beauty. That looks quite nicely made, to be fair. It's a bit nicer than the one I made for myself, so I'm quite impressed with this. The, uh, this is handmade. I put an order in for this. Ooh, well, there are, I think there's a date on there when I ordered it. So, December. And to be fair to Express, they've been in contact all the way through the process. Let me know how it's getting on and so far they've been brilliant and I must say I'm quite happy with the panel it's a re reasonable gauge steel so I look forward to fitting this right time to start on this side so I had to clean out and tidy up and move all my junk over to the, the other side so uh, time to start cutting out and tidying up the floor pan ready for the new one now the new one goes under that section there, so I don't know how much I'm going to put, work out first and clean up all this um, rubbish off the top of that one, that back floor pan, and see what it's like underneath there. If that's clean enough, I might just go to the box section there, but it does seem, I'm not quite sure how this would have finished off originally, I guess. Now let's have a look on the other side. Yeah, you can just see there was a as a lip come should come off of that. I oh, can see it there. In fact, there should be a lip come off of that and run along there. So it might be a case of take this out and do something with that afterwards. Cross that bridge when we get to it. First things first is remove the seat box and remove this floor. Right, that's the seat box out. I didn't put up too much uh, resistance. It was already pretty rotten. So. On to removing the floor now, so if you're curious, I'm not going to film pulling this floor out, but if you're curious about the method I use, I just watched a video when I built the floor pan over there, and it's pretty much the same way of doing it. As I remember from last time when I did that side, I put that uh, strength in there because the pillar here would move around quite a surprising amount once I got things cut out, so that's there. To stop that from happening, somebody's bodged up a lock. <laughs> I guess this had a cable on it on the inside there somewhere, which pushed that up into the door. Now it must have been a different door to the one that's on the car, because there's no hole for that to go into. Uh, it's amazing what uh, people come up with, isn't it? Oh, on the other side, I did the sill first before I did the floor, but the sill on the other side was considerably worse than this one. Now, this one isn't too bad, but I suspect it's rotten on the inside of it, so I'm going to change it anyway. But but I've been across it with a hammer and it sounds solid enough, so I'm going to leave it in place while I do the floor. Because the floor is going to give me more, put more strength back into the shell than the sill is. I right, just to um, show you what I do before I cut the floor out so that I don't go hacking through the chassis leg. I get underneath the plasma cutter and just blast the little hole up where the edge of the chassis is and then just line up the sharpie dot the dot and that gives me something to follow on the side down. And if you haven't got a plasma cutter you could probably just use a small drill bit and do exactly the same thing. And then follow this side with a with a um, grinder with a slitting disc. But to be honest, if you're doing this sort of work, uh, the, uh, with this amount of work on a car, and a plasma cutter, they're cheap enough, is a must. They uh, save so much time. There, floor out. I've got some tidying up to do with the, the edges of this where they roughly welded on previously. 
that I need to sort out and still not sure what, what's going to happen over here yet there's some damage to be some rust to be repaired in the chassis leg here before we go any further which is horrible so that needs attention but there we go an hour with the plasma cutter and the floor is out happy days right so a little bit step further in here you've got some of the bodged floor pan now cut away and the existing this was the original part of the floor pan the gearbox tunnel transmission tunnel so got that to clean off yet but i'm i'm hoping that can stay as it is for now till i work out where i need to cut the new one i think the new panel will come up to about here somewhere anyway so i'm hoping all that will be just cut away i've just cut it away so we can make space for the new one to cut to go into place so the chassis leg I have cleaned out, wire brushed and give a good scrubbing and given it a paint with the two pack epoxy that uh, I'm giving a go at. So the next thing really is to focus on this bit over here to see how I need to pull the floor out. You see it goes to about there's a seam there goes to so I need really to cut that out. So, so that means doing something with this brace here, which it's pretty, I, I don't really know what to do with this. I'll try and take it out carefully because I think I might be able to rescue it. Because it's just the bottom flange, it needs to be sorted out on it. The rest of it is not rotten or anything. So I'm hoping I can do something with that. So that's the next challenge, start cutting away at that. Okay, so I'm going to have a go at removing this. Uh, box section along here so I'm thinking of cutting around there somewhere and just seeing if I can get this out in a, a usable piece hopefully okay that's that removed from there not in the best shape I'm, uh, you see I've got my thumb um, yeah maybe I can repair it might be, yeah, we'll see if we'll come back to that later. But that's revealed what's going on in there. So next bit is to get the rest of this section out. Right, that's the rear section of floor hacked out, which has revealed some more horrors. Not entirely unexpected, but this is pretty rotten down here. And through there you can see some rot which is that bit of nastiness just there that's the uh, next area of attention before we go any further so it continues right back on this again so i've got the chassis rail piece in place so if you remember i left the edges unwelded so they give me the wriggle room and i'm glad i did that now so I'm going to start off with this corner here, get this all lined up and tacked in place, work my way over to here, then in that corner over there, get it all tacked in, then bang, weld it all in. Happy days. Right, so here we are. That's tacked in this side and over here, all in place where it needs to go. So I'll, um, I'll fully weld this side first and then I'll get underneath and weld up that side. Right. That's now fully welded in place, so we can hopefully crack on with the floor. There we are, so that's the underside all welded up and looking like it might not fall apart. I've taken a um, wire brush up there, just because I'm happy with it. That's pretty good from there on backwards, just surface rust, as far as I can see so far. So that's good news. I'll um, probably clean these welds back once I get it up on the rotisserie. Be a lot easier to work on. Right, 
got me uh, support cut out and this is all nice and solid and back to square one so the next challenge is to cut out all this nastiness along here so that we can then start playing with seeing how the floor pan fits Right then, we're getting close to where we can try sliding the panel into place. I don't know how well this is going to work with my braces, so it's just going to be a case of suck it and see and, and hope for the best. But they got the what was left of the inner sail stroke floor pan off there. That was a bit of a battle. But uh, has come off. I've left uh, over there on a little bit more. Oops, gone out of focus. Uh, just left a bit more of meat on there because the, the new panel has dropped down just there so I'm, uh, I don't cut too much away hopefully and let's crack on let's have a go fit in the new panel and see how it goes right let's have a go gloves on and see what happens I suspect that my race is getting in the way, which is a pity. Didn't really want to cut that out. Right, let's see if I can feed it into the boot and through. Uh, so that question is no, I cannot. Right, okay. This means we have to cut my brace out. Uh, those at the least I can I've got the welds to know where to put it back because it is a very small amount of movement on that but it will go back to where it's come from so it looks kind of like the floor right so you can see underneath we're about three quarters of an inch off at the moment but not hideously out of shape so that's going to involve a little bit of work over in this department over here get that tidy so just in there that needs to come down into that which will mean a little bit of trimming on the, the floor pan so that's you can work with that and in this side we're fitting reasonably nicely Apart from that gap there, but we can work with that as well. I can put a plate or something in there to work that out. And so far, we've got plenty of meat, apart from a little corner there, to to connect up to along there as well. So so far, quite encouraged by it. Okay, turns out I'm an idiot. That does fit quite nicely in there. Just the whole floor pan needed to go all that way. Slightly, I was lining it up with where that's coming down to, but that's obviously been cut a bit long there, so that's no problem. We can trim that back so it, uh, it lines up now with that bump there, 
and with our seat box it lines up there so that's the bits that matter I've got my there's a bump here as well for the um, jack mount so still a little bit of trimming to mess around with to come around this yeah but we can little by little we can start trimming this up to get it to drop into place nicely right have a bit more shuffling backwards and forwards and being inventive with a with a car jack we've uh, managed to get this slowly into place now, i'm very glad i left this out the sill on um because this is obviously way too tall here um it's got to come down a little bit but not a lot like them yet there you go as you can see we're not a million miles away from there now and it fits very nicely up under my new section there so quite pleased with that and it's not huge gaps along here either i think we're close enough now to start thinking about scraping this off and drilling out ready for plug welds in here i intend to do a famous fitzy cut and butt across there to get that all lined up which is so much easier way of doing it so glad i found his channel and learned his little trick so that's really good so next thing i'll do now is get a sharpie get underneath um, go around all the chassis rails and start drilling out them for spots or plug welds rather right as tempting as it was to leave this in place because it's a pain to get in and out this is the right way to do it so i've taken it out <coughs> excuse me we've gone underneath sharpied up the lines and taken it back out again so what i'll do now is every couple of inches i'll mark off and drill uh, either six or five mil hole whichever drill bit I come across first for plug welds right so here we go all holes drilled in ready spaced apart at about two inches apart so that should be plenty for that so what i'm going to do next is mix up some of the the uh, hp body epoxy primer give that a coat along there because even though i've sprayed this with what's supposed to be epoxy primer i'm not entirely convinced and as it happens the the bit i put outside to check on to see how well it, it, it performs it started corroding so i'm <laughs> not, not happy with this stuff but the hb body stuff is brilliant so far it's, the, 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 the weather hasn't touched it so that's what i'll do i'll coat this and i'll also coat what's left of the inside of the chassis on the car right so here it is all painted up with some epoxy into the areas which are going to be difficult to get to in the future i ended up painting more than i intended but i wanted to use up what was left in the pot and the same in here all epoxied up on the internals where you're never going to get to them again so that should help keep that nice and clean uh, out of interest this is the uh that's a spray epoxy it's supposed to be two pack epoxy clearly hasn't worked very well this is the hb epoxy the only place you've got a little bit of rust is on the edges where it hasn't coated but on the in the center it's rock solid still and even on the bit here that i painted over the rusty bit it is still nice and clean so well impressed with that so far Right, back on this, bit of a delay, good old Covid had me. So uh, let's come back in the garage now to have a little play now, I'm uh, a little bit better. Testing negative now but I'm still feeling a bit rough so just doing what I can. Anyway, enough of that. Um, got this bar back in place, now I've got the floor pan laid in place. The challenge now is to get all my drilled holes lining up with what's below now we're, we're pretty close got a few gaps here and there which is just going to be a case of pushing the pan down what i might do is similar to what i've done here uh, using my magic screws just roll that out <coughs> to push that down onto the chassis and then 
I pan out a bit, I might put a, a metal cross there and my jack then in between. I can then jack the floor down to the chassis rail. The, 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 pa the floor pan is very, very slightly bellied that way. So it does need to go down just a tad. So that's not the end of the world if it means you can see it's starting to crease up a little bit there. But that's if we gotta mess around with that, that's so we can we can work with that. But overall I'm quite happy with the floor pan. It's it's uh, for a handmade panel it's, it fits pretty well. So this is the idea with the uh jack just to help bring it down. It's sort of another million miles off. Like I said before, it just needs to come down a little bit. So put that between there and there. And that's how bring that down just a just a quarter of an inch or so just to bring it to line it up nicely. All the others are, are pressing in quite nicely. Nope. You can see where the uh, the screws just now and again holding them in place. You can see how nice and tight this is there. Now you can see they're uh, nice and close. So it's looking good. Right then, put it mark up over there where the edges are going to be. So I'm going to trim around this now with the grinder. Hopefully, I can move this enough out of the way because I've put this far back in now. Should be okay. So what I want to do is tidy up the mess there <coughs> and around this area here. Right, so I'm going to start here, which is where I'm closest, and start tacking this in place. And when it starts to overlap, I'll uh, cut and weld as I'm going. Similar to the cut and butt, but uh, with slight modification to it. We'll see how we get on. Now, you see there's a bit of a gap there. Eh? I'm not afraid of gaps, especially when MIG welding. At least you know you're getting through to the other side with a, with a bit of a gap. Right. The little pick sets are perfect for this. Be able to get in behind and give the metal a bit of a tug when it's dropping in behind like that. Right, and across here, because we're overlapping, I'm going to do a bit of a mixture of the old uh, cut and butt approach along here. So you just tack it, then uh, come back to it and zip it and, and get it good and properly. Right, so that's now all held in place, you can't go anywhere. I can now take a, a zip cut to this and run it along there and happy days. That was the theory anyway. I think we got the structure behind there, which I'd forgotten about. Yes, we have. Okay, plan B. I'm going to stick with the lap weld across there and then when I get the car in the rotisserie I can grind out a mess about with on the underside when I, uh, I get around to it. It'll uh, 
it'd be easy enough to get to look neat on this side. The damn sight neater than was what was here is well, this needs to be all ground off and tidied up anyway. So I'll go ahead and I'll lap well at that and uh, worry about the consequences of that later on down the line. Right, so slowly, slowly, I managed to get the zip cut into there, so that's going to be nice butt joint across there. I intend to do exactly the same across there. So I'll set the camera up now and show you what I mean by that. All right, so I've got it tacked over here. And the idea is just, it's a slight variation on what Fitzy does. But uh, I'm just going to run a, a grinder just flat into there now, so that'll give me a little bit of a gap for the weld to sink into and join everything up nice and tight. So basically, using that as a guide, run the disc straight into there. Now, what Fitzy does goes in at a 45 degree and no doubt his way is better than my way, but I find a little bit of a gap helps with the welding to penetrate better. So I'll do now reach up behind, drag that bit off that I've, welded, that I've just cut up. So there's the bit I've cut off, and now we can just weld that to suit that. So the idea now is find where it's most flush to begin with and start tacking it. There's a good place. Just like so. Right, so you can see it uh, coming quite nicely now. The advantage of a little gap there is you can get a tool in there to mess about with it. There we go. I'm just there. So now that'll be easy enough to spot and uh, seam weld that, but at the time, as I've done before in previous videos, just dot 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 along, come backwards forwards, won't oh, oh, bother filming that because it's very laborious and boring. So we we'll start working away towards the rest of the, uh, <coughs> towards the back of the car now, exactly the same process. And after that I've got... Um, a million plug welds to do or plug welds to do and then reinstate the back after I've done all the puddle welding I got this lot to put back together afterwards so plenty to do I shall crack on so I shall seam across there and then do my plug welds along here. Uh, I've got to connect into the across here to the bulkhead. I messed about a bit back here to, to connect into this quarter panel. Obviously I'm not gonna uh, plug weld to this because this will be coming off. So I'm just uh, clamping it to that for now to keep shape. Once this is in place and tied down tidy, <coughs> I can then start working on this sill. Right, we've finally come to the end of this video. <clears throat> Putting in this floor pan. So it is all welded up. Fully seam welded. The uh, plug welds back over there. That bit tied back in there. I haven't worried too much about the cross here yet, of course, because we'll be replacing the sill. All the uh, plug welds down. The chassis is now nice and tight underneath there. So, happy days. 
another job crossed off the list. I think the next video will be reinstating this rear seat box uh, support section across here. There's enough work involved in that to be a video by itself, so I think that'll be the next one. So uh, keep an eye out. That's where we'll be going. So thanks again for watching. If you're a watcher and not a subscriber, please do subscribe. It does make a big difference to the channel. And of course, hit the like button. And uh, if you haven't already, have a good look at all our other videos. <coughs> Thanks again for the uh, fantastic comments I've been getting off you guys. I really do appreciate it. No doubt if you've done work like this, you know sometimes you hit the wall a little bit and you're, uh, you, <laughs> you feel like giving up and just uh, leaving it alone for a couple of months. But uh, knowing that you guys are watching and commenting and enjoying, it uh, does help keep me going. So brilliant. Thanks again. And uh, keep up the good work on your own projects. Cheers. Release the next one.